Hi, I'm Kevin Commons, the head of the Colin McFedrin Trek. As many of you would be aware, the trekking team were scheduled to depart Australia in January of this year to walk 500 kilometres from Kachin State in Myanmar to the India border in honour of 40,000 World War II refugees. Unfortunately, three and a half weeks before departure and after three and a half years of work, our plans were suspended due to an outbreak of military activity and civil unrest in Kachin State, particularly around the capital, Michina. Since then, our communication with you all has been relatively quiet. We know you care about what's happening with our trek and we're very appreciative of that. Our operators in Yangon continue to monitor conditions in Kachin State and keep the trek on the radars of Myanmar local and federal government, as well as that of local officials. Together with our contacts in Australia and in India, we've developed plans and a route extension that will actually see us finish the trek in Lado, in India, the original terminus point of the 1942 World War II exodus. This is a particularly exciting point for us because for the first two and a half years of planning, that destination eluded us and we were frustrated in our attempts to get there. We continue to train locally and we're now in the process of updating our media and our website. However, there's no fixed date for the trek to take place. Civil war continues to plague Eastern Kachin State. Armed ethnic groups in the regions have not attended the peace talks in Yangon. But these are not new developments. By far the biggest obstacle remaining for us is access to Kachin State. Moving around in Kachin State is still highly restricted at the moment, not just for foreigners, but also for locals and NGOs, as restricted township permits are not being processed and the Burmese military continues to launch offensives into areas, particularly around the largest town on our route, Danai. As many of you would be aware, contemporary media regarding Myanmar continues to focus on Rakhine State and the ethnic violence taking place there. While that doesn't necessarily affect our plans directly, it is naturally a priority for local government and it does place an increasing strain on already fragile government ethnic relations across Myanmar, countrywide. So we would sincerely like to thank all of you, thank you so much, for your patience, for believing in our project and supporting us as we endeavour to bring the trek to reality. The story of Colin McFedrin and his 40,000 fellow refugees isn't going to go away. The Stillwell Road isn't going to go away. And we as a team remain committed to the idea of bringing this historic and life-changing event to reality. So thank you very much. In the meantime, here's a bit of an insight into some of the training we've been doing. Now, of course, when making any uh, hiking trip into the snow, it's important that you have the most up-to-date gear uh, to ensure that your journey is enjoyable. So, Kevin, what, what have you gone with uh, in terms of uh, snow baskets on your, uh, on your hiking poles today? A little plastic basket on the end there. Now, I'm not due any credit because I could just buy these in the shop. Kenton and Charles, however, are due considerable credit because their poles didn't come with snow bars. Now, Charles, what have you gone with uh, uh, well, on this trip? Um, high tech. You'll know it, that there's a two-part process here. Uh, that didn't actually start off that way, but <laughs> it's developed. And um, I see. believe those are angle grinder discs. Uh, that would be a technical term. I don't use that. <laughs> I've gone with the uh, the second-hand chopping board, which uh, has had seen its fair share of green curries. Mm -hmm. 